Today, I'm at my desk because I want to take a look at music. It's something that I do like to dive into again every now and again because it's interesting how much music can affect the tone and story. I talk about all the time how I think, you know, the sound of your film is more important than the visuals. And music is obviously a massive factor of that. And I think it's worth revisiting over and over again just how valuable music is to your project and how much it can shift your intention. To do this, we're going to be jumping into Artlist because today's episode is partnered with the good folks over at Artlist. And we have talked about Artlist a ton on the show before because they really have pieced together an amazing catalog of music. The main thing that's really great about them is that it's one license. Artlist's unlimited license is a sync license to use the music from the Artlist catalog in film and video projects on any platform worldwide, including commercial use. So you have that subscription and you can use it however you want on literally anything you want. And given the fact that we're on YouTube, another really really important point is that every song is cleared with YouTube before it's ever put on the site. So you never have to worry about that as well, which really helps with issues of, you know, videos getting flagged before they ever go live for reasons like that. So that doesn't really happen. It's never happened to us using Artlist, which again, we've used Artlist for years. And with that out of the way, let's jump into finding music for different productions. And one thing I wanted to look at, which we haven't looked at before, and that's finding music for those hosting sections, those stand-up moments, as we like to call them, where we're actually doing the tutorial, I'm talking to the camera like this right here, because finding music for that is really important as well. You really want to nail the tone that you're trying to go for the piece or it's distracting and you don't want to go silent or that's also distracting. You feel the emptiness. It can start feeling very sluggish. Music will really help everything feel paced and moving along. And I have a clip in here already, which is from an episode we did with Ricky Staub. So I'll play that for a second. Just putting something on the title page. Just So I'll jump over to Artlist and I'll put on some headphones so I can actually hear what I'm doing. And these are actually Sentrance headphones, which I just got recently and I'm absolutely loving. I'll put a link for those below, but they don't sponsor the show or anything like that. But I just really dig these headphones. But jumping right in here, you can see that I, they really don't need to explain anything. It's extremely intuitive. You have your mood, which is great. The sort of tone and vibe uh, your piece might be everything from dark and scary to uplifting and happy. Then the theme of your video, which is always helpful, genre and instruments. So you you can really dial down to get a grouping of tracks that are going to send you in the right direction right off the bat. And you also have your staff picks, which you can turn on and off. You can mess with tempo, low, medium, and high, and even duration. All of this can get extremely useful when you're looking for something very specific. We won't get that specific for this. We'll just leave it open and see what we come across because I'm not 100% sure what I want. So I'll just click uplifting and dive in here and see what we got. And, and I'm actually digging that track quite a bit. So let's jump back over to Premiere. And uh, one thing I like to do is actually play the clip that I'm wanting to put the music to instead of downloading stuff that I like, bring it in and find out that it doesn't work. I like to play this while looking at music. That way it helps me really figure out what's actually going to work. So I'm going to loop this, something play it, on the title jump back page, over. Just getting something down on paper to feel like great way in. And to be clear, at this point, what I'm talking about is breaking a story for a concept that already exists, which is what- Yeah, so that doesn't work at all. <laughs> That's a, that's a little too hyped. All right, so we'll jump back over and I'm just gonna play this and go through some tracks and see what we can find. About just putting something on the title page. At this point, what I'm talking about is breaking a story for a concept that already exists, which is what got me thinking about this episode to begin with. And to be clear, at this point, what I'm talking about is- So I'm digging that. So I'm just gonna add this to my cart, jump into my cart and hit checkout. And that's gonna send it into my downloads, which I can grab just by going to my download history. And there it is, and I can download it as a wave mp3 or look at my license of course and in here in your library you have collections artists albums and packs songs and sounds so you can create playlists and projects and and all that stuff that you'd expect to be able to do i even like creating playlists just to write to like i've talked about on the show a ton before but now that we have our song we'll come over here and bring it into our project i'm going to find the piece that that piece right there is the piece that i think is actually going to work with this so i'm going to grab just this section and often what I'll do is, you know, I'm not going to use the entire song. You know, you have different points of the song where it's a little, you know, no beat at all. Then a little more laid back. And then obviously when it's pushing pretty hard. So obviously that part's not going to work at all. So I'll grab something like this. 
and then find the loop points and then loop this for a good amount of time for the piece. And then I will switch up the music as the video goes on as well. So it doesn't feel monotonous because if you leave that same beat going for a very long time, that's also going to distract your audience and start feeling redundant. So those shifts in music will help tonal shifts in your piece and help the whole thing feel paced up a lot more. But now with this in here, I'll go over into my track mix. On the back of the page, just getting something down on paper. Turn that way down. Or to feel like you've gotten. And then something I like to do as well is to put on an EQ. And then pull down uh, somewhere right in here, which is, you know, where our voice lands in frequency. That way it's sort of stepping the frequency of uh, the music aside there to let the voice push through a lot more about just putting something on the title page, just getting something down on paper to feel like you've got- And you can, you can uh, really see the effect of it if I boost that frequency. About just putting something on the title page, just getting something- And then turn it down down on paper to feel like you've gotten started. I think that's such a great. You can see how much it's in the way of the voice before. And uh, it feels like we, there needs to be a little more high frequency in my voice there as well. But we won't get into all that. But that's just something I like to do with our background music, because like I said, it lets my voice push through and put the music underneath everything else even more so because you really just want this as a back bed, not something that you're really hearing, but something more like you're feeling. But now let's move on to another example here. This is uh, something we did for Halloween I like last year or two years ago, which is not a short film or anything. It's more like a little sketch just so we could do an episode around it. But there's no music throughout the entire thing until it gets to a scare point, which is something like, you know, minute and a half into it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't feel like this needs music. But if you wanted to add some music to bring up a scene like this, if it's feeling a little too bland, something you could do is place music in it as if he were listening to music, so music within the scene. So maybe he, you know, he's got Spotify going, something like that. So now let's look for something that maybe would match that sort of tone. So I'm gonna go genre and maybe electronic and then see what comes up right away. Maybe something. Yeah, something with vocals, I think, is going to help a lot because that's just going to drive the idea that it's something he's listening to and not something that's supposed to be in the soundtrack. <laughs> and that's a great, I'm just going to download so we can, <laughs> so we can make a point there. Maybe we go with a different genre. Let's try indie. So there's a few options here that might work. So I'm going to grab a couple and I do like, as you can see, I just like to jump ahead and see what the feel of the piece is. You don't have to listen to the whole thing to know what kind of tone you're getting out of it. So I'll grab these real quick. Jump back over to Premiere and bring those in. <laughs> And so I want to start with this one because this is a great example about choosing the wrong music really can screw with your intention and what you're wanting your audience to feel. And even though this is supposed to be something that he's listening to, this is this is such a fun, bouncy thing that it just makes it silly. <laughs> so... <laughs> So something like that, do, doing that to something that doesn't need it can be a great way to boost comedic effect if that's what you're looking for, which is something that we've done on the show so many times, just bringing in, you know, tracks like that or tracks that should be hype, but we use it in a ridiculous way, which just heightens the comedy of it. But that is not what this wants to do. So then you end up with unintentional comedy. So that's things you really want to be thinking about when you're choosing your music. What is that going to make your audience feel? Make sure you're not hinging on something that just sounds cool to you. So you want to use it. I have seen that in people's films when they send them to me so many times. And it's just so important that you're really dissecting, thinking about, and understanding the impact that the tone you're placing into your film will have on your audience's perception of it. So let's, again, move on to something else. That feels maybe, I don't even know why I downloaded that. This one will probably work enough to at least illustrate our point. So if we bring this in... 
Now, starting it that way kind of makes it feel like to me that uh, the music is a little too orchestrated to the moment, which is, again, pulling it out of the idea of it being something that he's listening to in the actual scene. So I'm going to make it already playing. I'll make it fade in with, uh, with this just a little bit to sort of... And I think it should be a little lower. And now we want to make the music feel like it's actually in the room, that it's not a track that we just dropped on. And one of the first ways to do that for me is by making it mono. Our first problem here is that the song is stereo and the scene was captured with a shotgun mic, which means it was captured with a mono source. So you're getting two things that sound very different, which will keep your song from sounding like it's actually in the room, of course. So the first thing we're going to do is just fill left with right or right with left. And that already does a ton to make it feel like it's in the room. So we'll just do a before and after here. All right. And we're not going to sit here and process the whole sound to make it feel like it's in the room, but I will add one more thing, which is a reverb, just to make it feel like it's glued into the room a little bit more than it is right now. And then you'll want to mess with the EQ, of course, to match what the mic would have been picking up from that sound. So it wouldn't be quite as full. So you want to drop out uh, some frequencies here and there to really, you know, dial it all in to make it, again, feel like it's actually in the room. But we're not going to go crazy with this. But just having that in there, that idea that he's listening to music to start this piece completely changes not only what it feels like, but it's pacing. It feels faster to me now. Without the music, it, it the pace feels entirely different. So again, you know, of course, it's changing the tone entirely, but it's also changing the pace to something where the video didn't change at all. The edit didn't change at all. Only the music changed. And now I'm feeling a massive difference in the pace of the piece. So it's not just tone. It's also pace. So that's just two quick examples of how much music can alter the way that you perceive the project in question. And of course, we've talked a lot about the psychology behind the emotion that the music is going to alter within the piece. But another thing to keep in mind is how much pace will alter the piece. But that's it for today. Again, definitely check out Artlist. Their license is available at a yearly subscription of $199, which is billed annually. And no matter what platform you're on, no matter how many subscribers you have, no matter how many times you download a song or how many songs you download, that is just the license for unlimited use on songs. But if you're somebody who's doing client work, wedding videos, YouTube videos, that's insane. That $199 price is cheaper than just licensing one song half the time, especially if you're doing something like Needle Drop. And definitely check out our link in the notes below. That's gonna get you two free months of Artlist. So even if you decide not to keep it, you have two free months of grabbing a bunch of tracks to use for your production. And I think you will end up keeping it because it's, it's pretty excellent. So definitely check out that link in the notes below. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>